guys. Uh, today, what we are going to be doing is going to kind of do a recap and review of what we've talked about last week. And we're going to start looking at problems mixed all in together. So our first example problem we're going to be looking at. Uh, actually, before we do example problems, uh, there's kind of two equations uh, that you need to have and be able to use. Um, you should put these in your notes if you have not already done so. Um, so if you're ever asked to solve for the number of moles in a uh, for a certain chemical, so if you're solving for moles, what you need is you should have the mass provided to you in the problem, and you're going to take that and you are going to divide that by the molar mass. All right, so that's kind of our first equation um, that we are looking at. Um, so if you're solving for moles, you take the mass, which will be given to you in the problem, and you're going to divide it by the molar mass. So that's our first equation. Now, another type of problem uh, you might come across is one where you're asked to solve for the grams or the mass of a particular chemical. All right, so I'm going to put mass up here. Um, so how many grams, what is the mass, um, any types of those problems, that's what you're solving for is mass. That is going to equal the moles, and the moles will be provided to you in the problem. It's going to be moles times the molar mass. All right, so that is uh, what we are looking at as our two equations. Now, to decide which one you're uh, to use, you just kind of base it off what you're trying to solve for. If you're converting to grams, you solve for mass. If you're converting to moles, you solve for moles. If it's wanting to know how many moles there are in so many grams, well, you're finding out how many moles you're using this top one. That's why I know how many grams are in so many moles. Well, you're solving for grams, which is mass. So you'd be using this bottom one. Okay, so um, each of those types of problems, they're going to give you one thing and ask you to solve for the other. But you notice the common feature is both of them have the molar mass. So no matter what, you need to find that molar mass starting out. So let's look at a problem. Let's say uh, you're asked. So let's say you're asked how many grams are in 3.5 moles of H2O. All right, now, remember, no matter what, we need the molar mass. So we're going to start by finding the molar mass of H2O. Well, as we look at the formula, we have hydrogen and we have oxygen. There are two hydrogens, one oxygen. And we're going to be multiplying those by the mass that you can find on the periodic table. So the mass of hydrogen is that decimal number that's up there. Um, and it is 1.008. Oxygen is 15.999. Now just to recap, these numbers here came from the periodic table. This 2 and this 1 came from the chemical formula. All right, so we have the, these two problems, or this problem, we're trying to find the grams. We're working on finding the molar mass right now. So as we go through, we plug this into our calculator. You get that this top equation equals 2.016. 1 times this number is just going to give us back that number. All right, so we have those two numbers, we add them together, and when we do that, we end up with 18.015. Remember, this is the molar mass. This is not your final, final answer. All right, so we are trying to figure out how many grams. 
Okay, we found the molar mass. Now we need to figure out which equation we're using. If we're solving for grams, which is mass, that means we're going to be using this equation here. Okay, so this equation, mass is what we're solving for, equals moles times the molar mass. Well, from the problem, we know there are 3.5 moles. So there are 3.5 moles, and we need to multiply that by the molar mass, which we found here, 18.015. And when we multiply those two, we end up with an answer of 63.05 grams. And that is our final answer. All right, so as we looked at this kind of recap on this problem, the first thing is we found the molar mass. The second thing is we determine that we're using this bottom equation because we're solving for grams, we're solving for mass. The third thing is once we knew this equation, we just plugged in the moles, we plugged in the molar mass, and we used our equation to find our final answer. All right, so there's that problem. That's using this bottom equation. All right, so let's look at a different problem. Let's say our next problem is asking how many moles are in 100 grams of sodium nitrate, NaNO3. All right, so how many moles are in 100 grams of NaNO3? Now remember, starting out, no matter what, we need to find the molar mass. Okay, so we're going to find the molar mass of NaNO3. So we split it up. We have sodium, we have nitrogen, and we have oxygen. Now there's only one sodium, one nitrogen, but there are three oxygens. So now we need to multiply those numbers. And remember, we're multiplying them by the number that we find on the periodic table. So 15.999, uh, what is the next one? 14.007. Yep. And then Na is 22.99. Now, just remember, if you do not have a physical periodic table on the Canvas homepage, there is a link for a periodic table that has all of this right here. You can download it on your computer. You can save it. You can print it off. Use that periodic table. All right, so we have this. So we need to multiply across. All right, and so once we've multiplied across, uh, we now need to add those numbers together. And we end up with 84.994. All right, so that is our molar mass. That is not how many moles there are, it's the molar mass. Okay, now we need to come back to this problem and figure out how many moles. So we need to figure out which equation we're using. Well, we're solving for moles, and this top equation is solving for moles. Moles equals mass divided by molar mass. So we're going to use this top equation. Now, that means we need to start with the mass. This right here is the molar mass. We do not start with that number. Instead, we start with the mass which was given to us in the problem, um, and it was given to us as 100 grams. So we start with 100 divided by, 
So that 100 was the mass. It was given to us in the problem. And we divide that by the molar mass, which we found right here. So we divide that by 84.994. And when we plug that into our calculator, we end up with 1.18. And that is our final answer. All right, so just to recap, three main things. Number one, we started by finding the molar mass of this chemical. Always start with that. The second step was once we had the molar mass, we determined that we were using the top equation because we were solving for moles. And then number three, uh, we plug in for that equation and get our final answer. All right, guys, uh, this is just kind of video recapping what we did last week. Uh, your assignment for today is just going to be giving you a few problems like this. Um, actually, I think I'm just going to give you three problems on your assignment. Um, do those and submit that, and you will be done for the day. If you still need to make up any assignments from last week, make sure you are doing that and get those submitted. If you have any questions, just send me an email.